Well, I've pre-finished the panels. I did the front and the back of the main panel. And on the rails, I ended up only doing these parts right here. I still might have to clean these up a little bit once it's glued together. So I've got a clamping scheme. I've got some shims. I'll show you what those are for in a second. And I've got some clamps. So the first thing I need to do is get some glue on the tenons of this piece. And I'm going to get them on all four pieces. I'm doing that off camera because I don't want this stuff to drip all over the work table. It's kind of messy. I'm putting a little bit of glue right in the center of these rails also. And that's to help the panel stay centered. I don't really want to put glue anywhere else. I just want to make sure that it stays centered in that one spot. So got some in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this corner right here. And I know these panels are long, so I'm going to put this in, but I don't want to put it all the way to the end. Well, I'll move a little bit back here to trim off later. Now I'm going to stand this up like this. I'm going to put this panel in like this and then slide it in. Now before I slide it home, I just want to get it started. There it goes. Bring this out a little bit. I need to have a sixteenth inch all the way around here. So I'm going to take a couple shims, keeping them well away from the glue. that and I can get this panel out a little bit there I go one here one here bring that tight 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 now I can take this next one and I'm gonna get it started get my shims in there push it tight and then pull it in like that. So that's nice and tight there. Now again, I've mentioned this before, I know my assembly table is dead flat. I like to keep these panel doors on my work surface. I don't like to put the clamps underneath them because to me that tends to uh, bow them a little bit. I just want to put enough pressure on here just to close these joints. Don't need to torque them down. It's not necessary. And that's it. I'm going to let this sit for probably about three or four hours in the clamps and uh, do the other panel. Well, I have the panel out of the clamps and there's just some sl very, very slight inconsistencies on these edges. So I'm just going to go over those with a hand sander real quick and it'll only take me a couple minutes. Well this door is about a 32nd of an inch or so strong of fitting in that uh, rabbit in the back. So I'm just going to come over to the table saw. I'm going to take off maybe a 32nd of an inch on one side here and then see how that goes. Well, it almost fit maybe a 32nd of an inch again. So I'm going to move it over a 32nd of an inch more. And then I'll take a 32nd inch off the other side of the panel. So after that second pass, it's got a nice sweet fit to it. There's no gaps along the edges. Uh, it's a little proud of the back by maybe a 64th of an inch, but I'm not worried about that. It's the back. And I do have a little bit of an overhang here. And I need to deal with that next. So I've got the cabinet laid down on its, on its back now, and I just want to move this around a little bit until I've got an equal amount on both the top and the bottom. 
I'm just going to use my fingers. That's about right. And I've got a pencil here that I, sh that I flattened on one side so I can keep it tight up against the cabinet. And I'm just going to strike a line down there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back. Now that I've got that done, I can actually just take this over my table saw, put on my cross-cut sled, and cut that piece off, and I'm going to leave the line. Well, I've got the panel over here on my, my cross-cut sled. I just want to take that line that I drew and line it up with the kerf cut on my saw and make sure that it's in the front here too is the same. I want to leave the line for now. I'd rather cut a little bit large and then sh you know shave off a little bit as needed. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut to that, those lines that I made on here and then make a test fit and see how it works. Okay, for this next cut, this is where the cabin is a little bit off. I've got to make an adjustment for that. So if I line up that line on the back corner here and then look at the blade from the top, it's not cutting in a completely straight line due to that cabinet being a little bit off. So going by this line, I actually need to shim this corner out a little bit. So I'm going to line up that there with the blade and then the back corner with the kerf cut. And I've got this little bit of a gap here, which is about a 32nd of an inch. So I always keep some playing cards in the shop and they come in really handy for something like this where I can shim it and cut at that angle and still be secure on the sides. So let's give that a whirl. So I've got the cabinet on its face again. I'm just going to put this panel in here and check to see where it does. I'm going to get a flush at the bottom here, which it is, and then check the top. You take just a little bit off there. I'm going to take my pencil again. I'm going to mark that underneath using that flat spot, really thin there. I'm going to go back to my table saw again and cut off just a little bit more at the top. Well, the second cut didn't make it, so I had to go over a third time and using the credit card trick or the uh, playing card trick, I'm perfectly flush here on the bottom and perfectly flush around the top. So that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to flip the piece over. Well, that ash is really gorgeous. So I'm just going to leave that in there for now. I need to put the top on. Now, my hinges I'm going to keep on the left-hand side as you're looking at the cabinet. And so that goes like that. I'm basically going to do the same process here that I did for the back door or for the back of the cabinet. So after a few passes at the table saw and a few swipes with the hand plane, I've got the door fitted to the top of the case. Um, it's nice and even all the way around. There's this one corner back here where the door is just a little bit short by maybe a 64th of an inch. That's okay. I'm going to actually use that to my advantage later on. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the top for this piece. Once I get the top on here, then it'll be a lot easier to get the uh, door in place and cut the hinges. Well, this is the piece that I'm using for the top of the uh, cabinet. I've already milled it down to three quarters of an inch thick, and I've already ripped it to six and a half inches. Actually, I measured it, cut it, but forgot to hit the record button. Anyways, so... Basically, the theory behind it is that I've got the cabinet is five inches wide. I've got a three-quarter inch door, and then I want a three-quarter inch overhang. If you add all that up, it's six and a half inches. So now I've got to cut this to length. Now, I know my cabinet is 19 inches wide, and I want a three-quarter inch overhang on each side, so that makes it 19 inches. Now, there is a bark inclusion right here. 
that I want to get rid of. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to square up this end, flip it around, and then cut off this right here at 19 inches. So I'm over here at the router table. And what I've got is a 45 degree chamfer bit set up. I've got it so the ball bearing is even with my fence and I've got it up somewhere around 3 eighths of an inch. I really don't know. I just want to make a, <clears throat> all I want to do is make a chamfer around the underside of the top. So this is going to be the top. This is going to be the bottom. It's very important that I remember which sides to do this on. So this is the, this is the face I need to put the chamfer on right there. So I'm just going to mark actually on top here so I can see that. And then obviously the two ends. So also this is not a huge board. If I try to push this through like this, there's a chance that I could tip a little bit. Also, there's going to be some blowout and I really don't want that. So I've got this piece of MDF. I'm going to use that as a backer. It's going to give me some extra support. And I'm going to use these push pads and push the whole thing through using push pads. That'll keep the face of this down tight to the table and I can apply pressure towards the fence at the same time and this will help me avoid blowouts. So I just need to power this up and make the cut. I'm ready to glue the top on. I've sanded it down. I've also eliminated all the shellac that was on this top piece. So all I'm going to do, this is probably the easiest glue up you'll ever do. Uh, I don't have to worry about cross grain because basically both grain is going the same way. So I just want to put a good amount of glue on here. Well, this is the top and that edge I cut is actually going to go towards the bottom. So all I'm going to do is I'll put this on there about where I think it's going to go like that. And I know I need three quarter inch overhang on each side. I'm going to take one of these quick clamps, go in the corner, just tighten it down. So again, I'm just going to let this cook in here for about uh, three hours, four hours maybe. Well, I need to start building the bar that's actually going to hold the chisels in place. I've got this piece of cut off that I've saved exactly for this. This is ash. I'm going to cut it, I'm going to rip it down to one inch thick. Now that I've got that ripped down to one inch thick, I'm going to go over my miter saw and I'm going to cut two pieces out of this. They're both going to be 15 inches long. I'm over at my drill press. I've got a quarter inch Forstner bit set up and I want to drill eight holes in here right in the center at one sixth of an inch, one sixteenth of an inch deep. A drill press is a lot like a router tub table in a couple ways. First of all, you can zero it out just like that and then there's an adjustable stop collar on the side and you can set it to the depth you want which I did right there to be a sixteenth of an inch. So if I look down here go like that, if I measure that I'm looking at that, yeah that's roughly a sixteenth of an inch. So that's good. Now all I need to do is lower this bit on here right in that spot that I want to drill. I'm just going to take my fence. It doesn't really matter if it's even or not. I'm just going to take my fence and go like that and tighten this down. So now all I have to do is go down the row and every hole will be exactly in the center of that board or at least in the same spot as the other one was on that board. So let's get to it. Just as before, I'm just going to clean these up real quick with the hand plane and then really lightly with, you know, 320 grit sandpaper. So I get these pencil marks off of here and any machine marks. All right. I've got that. I'll just continue around the board and get all four faces of it. Another thing I want to do is I want to add a little detail to the front of this. Don't want to touch the back just the bottom and top or the top and bottom and the front of it. So I'm going to start with the sides and 
This is all end grain. I want to make sure I don't blow that out in the back. Just take real nice, easy strokes with the chisel. And that's it right there. So I'm just going to do the other three sides or the three ends. And then I'm going to also do another detail on the front of these. So just on the, the front face here, I'm just going to grab a block plane and just start chamfering that edge. Maybe 10 strokes, maybe 20 strokes. It really doesn't matter. Um, just so it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Nobody's really going to touch it. But again, I really like the look. Is anybody counting? I don't know how many that is. So I just got a little bit of a chamfer there, but you can see it. It's not like a dull round over. So that's what I'm looking for. And glue on the top is dry. And I'm going to get ready to mark the hinges for the door. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 32nd of an inch shim. And I'll put that there and butt that up against it. That's going to give me my 32nd of an inch so the door can open and close. That's why I said before I can use that where it's off a little bit on the bottom to my advantage. So just make sure that's nice and aligned in the front. Keep that right in one spot. Then I can take my marking knife and I can put it up against the mortise for the other hinge and just rotate up. and make a little tick mark where those hinge locations are. Now I'm going to, when I get done here, I'm going to go over with my marking gauge, my marking gauges, which I never changed from when I did the hinges the first time, and mortise these out the same way. Well, I started to cut the uh, mortises for the hinges in the door, and I realized I've made a huge screw up. Not that I haven't made any other screw ups on this project, but uh, I actually cut the hinge mortises in the wrong place. When I was doing the video, I wasn't paying attention, and uh, the door would, be, would hang fine, but it would be upside down, so that's no good. So what I did was I found I had still had some material left from when I made the doors, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And I made some filler pieces that I cut and put them in there. And those are ready to be taken out of the clamps. They've been in there about five hours or so. So I'm going to take them out of the clamps. I'm going to plane them down. And I'm going to have to sand a little bit. And I'm going to have to be able to fill in those little, there's a couple little tiny gaps. Okay, there's one patch done. I'm going to do the other one and then... Uh, I'll do the, the, the sides and get rid of these. Well, there's the first repair. It came out, you know, well enough. You're going to see it if you're looking for it. And let's see if I can get the other one there. The other one's about the same. I mean, you're going to be able to see it, but the grain is not bad. I've already pre-drilled for the holes in the case. And I'm, gonna get, I'm getting ready to do the holes in the doors. So this is one of the hinges. And these, I fit them so they, the barrel goes right up against it. And I'm going to take this. This is a Vix bit. And what it is, it's got a, whoops, it's got a spring-loaded thing here. And it actually sits in the center of that and perfectly centers the hole. These things are invaluable when putting hinges in. So just do that. You don't have to worry about making sure you're in the right spot or right in the center, and you just drill down. Making sure not to drill all the way through, I should say. Here's the cabinet standing up and the door on it. Um, works pretty good, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I've got to fix a little bit of that on the corner here and do some finish work and some final detail work, but um, we'll call the door done. I've got the pieces all dusted off and they're really nice and smooth. There was a couple problems I found that I fixed. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to take some paste wax, 
get my some of my rag there and I'm just going to wipe this on try to do it in as much of a circular motion as I can especially on these edges I don't want to get a lot of wax down in the cracks here because it's going to be a little difficult to get it out so just light coats you don't have to you know gob 800 pounds of this crap on there you really don't want to do that especially this this brie wax it actually dries pretty hard and uh, if you let it sit too long it can be really hard to buff out uh, I've seen some people take uh, and dip their rag in mineral spirits I've done that uh, before dipped it in mineral spirits just to cut it a little bit to make it a little bit easier to work with but um, the shop is pretty warm today so it's flowing real nice and smooth so I'm gonna let this sit for about five to ten minutes I'm gonna come back with another cloth and then buff it all out well it's been about five minutes or so I'm gonna start cleaning this off I want to knock my cup of coffee over there. Might have to come back. A little bit of wax got in those cracks. I could come back with a toothpick and clean those out. So that's it. I'm going to do the rest of the piece. And uh, yeah, that's, that's nice. Really feel that hand plane surface. There's a couple plane tracks here and there. I, I really like that. It's got a right, real nice uh, tactile feel to it. So like I said, I'm going to move on to the other pieces and then when I'm done there, I'm going to glue in the magnets to all this and put it all together. I'm getting ready to start gluing these magnets in. And these are the magnets I'm using. I bought a jar of like 100 or 150 of these a while back and I use them all the time they're pretty strong uh, stronger than you would think there's a little quarter inch 16 inch quarter inch wide 16th inch thick I know I can talk and I'm just going to glue these in with some five minute epoxy so I'm just going to mix some of this up once I've got that mixed up I can just start putting some epoxy in the holes doesn't need a lot. I don't want squeeze out. Just take one of those. Actually, I'm going to put it on the end of a screwdriver. Drop it in that way. So I've got that one in just 15 more to go. I think you can see, hopefully you can see, I've taken some 150 grit sandpaper and just real lightly I removed all the finish in just these areas right here. I'm going to put this case back on and position it again because I want to use that template I made before to help me position these. I'm going to be using Nexabond on this. Uh, it's like super glue for wood. I think I talked about it in one of the earlier episodes of this build, but uh, it's great stuff. So it doesn't require any activator or anything like that. I'm just going to put a drop right where I created that vacancy of finish. I'll do the top here too real quick. And this stuff bonds in about five minutes. It still takes, you know, I still give it 24 hours to cure, but it goes pretty fast. So I'll put this back in here. I'll get my bar in there first, like that. And plop that right in. I'm going to give it a little nudge side to side. I move that, and there we are. And then I'll do the top piece. Well, I've given these time to dry, and they're in there pretty good. It's only about 10 minutes. So 
probably wonder, you're wondering what I'm going to do with this blue tape here. And the answer is pretty simple. I need to glue this back into the cabinet. However, I do not want to uh, take off finish where you're going to see. So I'm just going to put some blue tape on here like so. And I know that lip is 3 eighths of an inch. I'm just going to cut right along this tape. Like so. And if I peel it up, I can get this corner. Easier said than done, right? <laughs> Giving me problems. All right. Now, if I remove this tape, I can see exactly where I need to remove material. Pretty easy. And I'm just going to take some 150 grit sandpaper and sand off the finish in those areas. Now that I've got that area sanded off, I don't need to sand off anything on this at all. I'm just going to take some glue, take a very light bead, run it all the way at the top. I'm going to take this, making sure that the bottom of the cabinet matches the bottom of the cabinet. Because, heaven forbid, I should glue this thing on upside down. Not that I've ever done anything upside down or backwards on this build. I'm going to rub that a little bit. Well, I think that's good for the clamps on this. I'm going to let this sit for a couple hours before I take it out. And then I'll work on getting the hinges installed, or reinstalled, and the door installed. And then we can call this project done. So I'm getting ready to install the door now. And uh, make sure that these are flipped over. This is just a helpful hint, I guess, more than anything else. Installing doors like this can be a pain because you're trying to jockey stuff around. So this, this is why I like to do the case sides first. Uh, if you can find hinges that actually have a removable pin, that's really nice. Um, these ones I got from Woodcraft. I think they were about $13 for the pair. They're not real expensive hinges, but they're decent. Um, sometimes I use Brusso hinges. They're really expensive, but they're very nice. So I've got one screw in there, just kind of loose for now. And then I'll bring this side over, flip that hinge over. There we go. And then I'm going to get the other side started. And again, just one screw in each and to the outside or the top. There we go. I don't want to snug these in yet, but I do want to get them. So there's a little bit of pretty fairly tight, but still have a little bit of room to wiggle around. So we'll get this one in next. All right. Now I'm going to position that. I'm going to snug this one up. Same there. And then these last two. I'm real careful not to strip these heads either because you ever have to take them off. It's, it's not pretty. There we go. Grab a rag to clean that off. All right, that's it. Pretty exciting, huh? Putting some screws in, but it's important. So, and I think that's it. Yep. All right, cabinet's finished.